I want to spend a couple of uh, lectures talking about the New South, what was going on in the South during the Gilded Age uh, regarding industrialization, economics, what was going on politically. I will not talk very much about what was going on with African Americans. That will seem like a glaring uh, omission, but that's because that's such an important topic. I'm going to come back and save that for later. The New South was, first of all, after uh, the Compromise of 1877, overwhelmingly democratic. And it was run by a group of people who called themselves the Redeemers. Uh, the South was officially redeemed uh, with the withdrawal of federal troops. <clears throat> You'll recall from the novel 1876, part of the deal that resolved the contentious election of 1876 was uh, the Compromise of 1877, which said that Tilden, I'm sorry, not Tilden, but uh, Hayes could be president in exchange for, among other things, withdrawal of troops from the South. And so uh, the, the white supremacists basically are put back in charge. Um, and this was referred to as home rule. Uh, but reality is that a small conservative oligarchy who called themselves the Redeemers and whose enemies called them the Bourbons after the French royal family ruled the South. Some represented the antebellum, the old antebellum elite, the planter class, but not many. Most of that class was swept away. Most were new, uh, new the new commercial class, merchants, industrialists, railroad developers, financiers, very much the southern version of the oligarchs running the north. They were committed to three things, home rule, uh, rule from Montgomery, from Richmond, from Atlanta, not Washington. They were very uh, socially conservative. And they were committed uh, passionately to economic development. And I would say these three things are still prevalent in Southern politics. The Redeemers uh, supposedly did away with Reconstruction corruption, uh, but where they in fact themselves were corrupt, just like uh, every government in every region of the country was corrupt. They lowered taxes uh, and dramatically, and to pay for that, they dramatically diminished state services including some of the best features of Reconstruction. To give you an example of, of how um, ruthlessly they would cut uh, services to lower taxes, let me, let me talk about uh, 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 Governor uh, James uh, L. Kemper of Virginia. Um, he said, basically, we don't need schools. Um, now, Kemper was, uh, he was, he was uh, a Civil War veteran, of course, he was the youngest of the brigade commanders and the only non-professional military officer in the division that led Pickett's charge, uh, in which he was wounded and captured. He received a groin injury, and the bullet was never able to be removed, so apparently he was in a bad mood for the rest of his life. Um, but uh, in a uh, House of Delegates session in, in Richmond, in 1877-78 uh, session, he, he said this, Education is a great blessing when of the proper sort and properly gained. There is no one who longs for it more than I. Public free schools are, however, not a necessity. The world for hundreds of years grew in wealth, culture, and refinement without them. They are a luxury, adding when skillfully conducted, it may be, to the beauty and power of a state, but to be paid for, like any other luxury, by the people who wish the benefits. So in his mind, eh, we don't need education. Uh, and when you start cutting things like education, uh, you can cut taxes pretty dramatically. Dissenting movements uh, arose against the Redeemers, uh, but conservatives, uh, the conservatives largely destroyed these movements by exploiting racial prejudice. It would occur to Southerners that, hey, let's make this a poor versus rich thing. There are a lot more poor people than rich ones, but uh, the race card, black versus white, would often be used to separate uh, the poor people. Uh, and, and to a degree, you would argue that's still being done today. Now, there were these promoters uh, of, of industrialization in the South. Recall that economic development was a major goal of the Redeemers. And the best example by far of these promoters is Henry Grady. Henry Grady was a journalist. Uh, he became the editor of the, of the Atlanta uh, Journal. Let it be merged. You have the Atlanta Constitution Journal, uh, or Journal of Constitution. I forget which. In any case, um, he would uh, um, go around the South and the North uh, promoting this thing called the New South. He coined the term. Uh, a vigorous economy was considered important by everyone. Not having one was seen as a, uh, a principal reason for the South losing the war. And so Henry uh, Grady said that the New South was a place that embraced Yankee values of thrift and industriousness. Um, 
he made a speech once that I think is important. Uh, he said, Once I attended an unusually sad funeral in Pickens County, Georgia. The deceased was an unfortunate fellow of the One Gallus Brigade, whose breeches, breeches struck him underneath the armpits and hit the, other, hit the other end about the knee. They buried him in the midst of a marble quarry. They cut him through solid, they cut him through solid marble to make his grave, and yet the, lime, the little headstone they put above him came from Vermont. They buried him in a heart of pine forest, and yet the rude pine coffin was imported from Cincinnati. They buried him within touch of an iron mine, and yet the nails in the coffin and the shovel they used was imported from Pittsburgh. They buried him by the side of the best sheep grazing country on earth, and yet the wool inside the coffin and the wool bands they used in lowering his body were brought from the north. The south furnished nothing for that funeral but the hole in the ground and the corpse. Um, his point being, we need to develop some industry here. We have all these wonderful resources. We need to build them. By the way, Pickens County, Georgia, even today, has an adult literacy rate uh, percentage somewhere in the 50s. Now, even as oligarchs and promoters and journalists like Henry Grady were promoting a new South, um, most Southerners were uh, uh, longing and looking at the Old South. Uh, popular fiction after the war glamorized the Old South. It spoke of the lost cause, uh, like, like the Civil War was something very noble. And we began to see this sort of uh, historical revisionism going on to sort of distance the South from slavery. Even today, you'll find people in the South who will argue that the South wasn't about uh, slavery. And I really defy them to, to argue that effectively. But in any event, uh, Southerners looked to the past uh, and Joel Chandler Harris is a good example of this. He's a writer who collected uh, these folk tales about uh, Uncle Remus and Br'er Fox and Br'er Rabbit. Um, and they were very popular. And in fact, um, in the 20th century, Disney uh, collected these stories and made this, this movie, this beautiful movie, called Song of the South. It's a musical, it's a combination, live-action cartoon, uh, and... Um, uh, it, it, it's, you're probably wondering why they've never heard of this, because uh, Disney is, is ruthless, of course, at uh, marketing all their movies every possible way they can, but they're not marketing this one, because it, in retrospect, it's politically incorrect in the extreme. Um, among black American writers, uh, because these stories were largely uh, from African Americans, and among black American writers, Harris is a highly polarizing figure. Uh, the great novelist Alice Walker, who wrote The Color Purple, she accused Harris of quote, stealing a good part of my heritage in a searing essay called Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Remus, No Friend of Mine. Um, so he, he's a rather uh, polarizing figure. Uh, Margaret Mitchell's novel, Gone with the Wind, and the movie Gone with the Wind are another example of this glamorization of the Old South. So that's what Southerners were largely interested in, uh, remembering uh, and, and sanitizing the Southern history. That said... While that was popular, uh, it was the oligarchs and the industrializers who marched forward, and they did see industrial growth in the South, and exactly how that happened and in what industries, I uh, will talk about next time.